today we are dealing on constraint optimization problem for uh, single decision variable. Now we are, uh, we are discussing the searching techniques for solving nonlinear programming problem where there is no constraint and only single decision variables involved, single decision variable is involved in the process. Now one of that technique is the exhaustive search technique. I have just introduced this uh, technique in my last lecture. Now I will just uh, brief it first, then I will just explain the whole methodology when, with some example. Now exhaustive search technique is that first assumption of for applying this technique is uh, the function must be unimodal in the given domain of definition. If this is the axis for the decision variable and this is the objective function within the domain of definition where function is defined A to B function is unimodal. We are let me discuss the method for the minimization problem. Same logic can be just reversed for the maximization problem as well. This is my fx function is unimodal that means there is only one minimum in between. Now the exhaustive search technique uh, tells us that we have to subdivide the whole interval into n plus 1 equally sp spaced subinterval and this n value is predetermined. So we can say x1 is one of that point x2 in this way it is just moving up to xn. Now we will just find out the functional values at each and every point at x1, x2 up to xn and we will see how the functional values are distributed and from there we will select the minimum value within that. Now, now if minimum attends at attends at xk then the interval of uncertainty let me define what is the interval of uncertainty. First we are assuming the function is unimodal between a and b that means the function is having minimum value in between a and b. Thus we can say that the function is uh, the in initial interval of uncertainty where the possible minimum may lie that is from a to b. Now we are subdividing the whole interval into n plus 1 equally spaced sub intervals and we are saying that minimum is occurring at we are assuming xk. Then if this is so that there are few things to be observed. First thing is that n, n is the number of experiments because we are finding the functional value in n points in the domain. Now then another thing is that the after nth experiment the interval of uncertainty is interval of uncertainty is from x k minus 1 to x k plus 1. That is why now first let us now decide what is the length of this interval of uncertainty. If we consider that ln is the length of uncertainty after nth, nth experiment length of interval of uncertainty after n experiments. and L0 is the initial length of uncertainty, interval of uncertainty rather length of interval of uncertainty then we can say that ln will be is equal to 2 into L0 divided by n plus 1 because the, size, the value of n, 
L0 is equal to B minus A because my given interval A to B and there are n plus 1 equally spaced points that is why we can say that the ln will be is equal to 2 into b minus a n plus 1. Now, this is the thing this we need it this result is uh, we need it for finding out the value of n because if it is not being said that how many points we will divide the whole survey interval in that case we will just use this formula and we will use it depending on that how much accuracy we want regarding the optimal solution. If I just show you one of the example it will be clear to you. Now, in this connection one thing I would just like to mention that measure of efficiency for this searching technique measure of efficiency or reduction ratio can be measured equal to ln by L0 certainly it would be is equal to 2 by n plus 1. Okay. Let me ex just solve one of the ex one example using exhaustive search technique and using all these facts it will be much more clearer to you. Let me take one example that is again we are considering the minimization problem. The same logic can be extended for the maximization problem as well. Find the minimum value of f x is equal to x into x minus 1 in the interval. 0 to 1 and obtain the optimal value obtain minimum value with within 10 percent of exact value. That means, if if I consider the case that there is the optimal value is x k then this side it should be 10 percent of the exact value and this side also the 10 percent of the exact value. That is why the whole interval would be altogether 20 percent this is and these are all equally spaced that is why the we can say that the length of the interval of uncertainty after the nth experiment ln by 2 must be lesser than L naught by 10. Okay. And in the given example, there is no mention that how many equally spaced points we will consider, but there is one information that the minimum value must be within 10 percent of exact value. From there, we just uh, develop this result that this side 10 and this side 10 ln by 2 that is a half of the whole interval of uncertainty is lesser than 10 percent of the original interval that is the initial interval and here the initial interval is 0 to 1 that is why L0 is 1. From here we are getting one relation that 1 by n plus 1 must be lesser than 1 by 10. In otherwise we can say n plus 1 must be greater than 10. In otherwise we can say that n must be greater than equal to 9. Let me consider the equality case because within the 10 percent of exact that is why 10 percent is acceptable to us that is why number of points which uh, I, on which I am just uh, deciding that how many equally spaced points we will consider within the interval 0 1 that must be greater than equal to 9. If we want that the minimum value is within the 10 percent of the exact value that is the case. Now, let me subdivide the whole interval 0 1 into 9 points 9 plus 1 points rather 10 points that is why we are consider x i s starting from point 1, point 2, point 3, point 4, point 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If I consider the interval sub interval size as point 0.1 then it will be sufficient because n is greater than equal to 9 
And one thing to be remembered that we have considered only the minimum value of n. If we increase the number of experiments, that is why if it just the, for example, instead of taking 10 number of such sub intervals, if we consider 20 number of sub intervals, we will get better result. If I just increase number of n much higher than the corresponding optimal value we are we are achieve we are uh, we are getting through the exhaustive search technique that will be much better than the previous result now if this is so let me consider the functional value at each point point 1 fx is equal to x into x minus 1 at point 1 the value is 0 0.09 point 2 the value is minus 1.16 minus 0.21 minus 0.24 these are the objective functional value at individual points minus 0.25 minus 0.24 minus 0.21 there is a this the function is very much symmetric in nature because looking at the values it, it uh, we can conclude in that way that is why we can say that minimum is occurring at point, point 0.5 because that is the only minimum functional value for us and we can declare the corresponding functional value as minus 0.25 that is the minimum value for us. This is the minimum and uh, we are sure that the if we consider the interval uncertain interval of uncertainty in such a way 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 the certainly we will get the 10 percent of the exact value that is the case. Now, one thing one note I just want to make here if we see that at 2 points the minimum value is coming if the minimum is coming minimum occurs at 2 adjacent points then we need to consider the minimum as the medium middle value of the whole middle value of these two all right in this way through the exhaustive search technique we can uh, we can find out the minimum value for uh, any given nonlinear function within the given domain now Another very important technique is there that is dichotomous search technique and this technique is uh, little bit complicated than the previous techniques I discussed before, but dichotomous search technique is uh, better technique to achieve optimal value for any nonlinear optimization problem. Now, let me discuss the dichotomous search technique here also the given information is similar. The function is unimodal in the given range function is uh, having only one minimum or maximum in the domain of definition given domain of definition and we need to find out the optimal value. Now, here also the same thing the number of experiments are uh, given uh, beforehand that is why how many number of points at how many number of points we need to evaluate the functional values these are all given otherwise an, another information may given may be given to us that how much accuracy we want regarding the minimum or maximum value of the given objective function. Now, the dichotomous search technique is uh, the let me tell you first the how it is being done the whole strategy then I will write down the corresponding algorithm say a to b that is on the real line certainly because we are considering the single variable case the function is uh, defined. Now, one thing to be mentioned here that searching techniques whatever we are discussing now these searching techniques are uh, applicable not only for the continuous functions these are also applicable for the discontinuous functions as well that is why uh, this is uh, we need not to depend on the differential of uh, differential coefficients we need not to differentiate the function etc that is why only the functional value calculation of functional value will be sufficient for finding out the optimal value. The dichotomous search technique tells us that if L naught is the that is the initial length of 
interval of uncertainty that is why L0 will be B minus A, then we will just take the middle value of that, then certainly it will be L0 by 2, all right. And we will consider two points in the left and right side of this middle point, these are my first two approximations for the optimal solutions. Optimal solution, one of that approximation is x1, another is x2, both are equally distant from the middle value and this distan distance is being considered with a specified parameter delta that is given to us and this side is delta by 2 and this side is delta by 2, alright. That is why if this is so, only information we need to have what is the value of A and what is the value of V and what is the value of delta. Then we will get two approximations of the any optimal solution, one is x1, another one is x2. And in this connection, we need to say that delta is a very small positive value, very small positive value and the value as much as small it will be, we will get accurate result, but the number of iterations will be more that is in other case. But if delta is a very small positive value, we will for we will get two approximations x and 1 and y1. After that, we will find out the value of x1, value of function f at x1, value of function y at x2. And if we see that fx1 is lesser than fx2, Certainly, certainly we will just consider, we will eliminate, we will eliminate x to b because we are considering again the minimization problem, f x 2 is giving us the better value, higher value that is why minimum cannot occur from x to b. Certainly the optimal, the new interval of uncertainty will be a to x2. Uncertainty would be a to x2. If this is the other case, fx1 is greater than fx2. Certainly, we need to, we have to eliminate a to x1 because minimum cannot lie within this region. I have already explained regarding the region elimination technique, the strategy we are adopting for each and every searching technique. Then we have to eliminate a to x1 and new interval of uncertainty will be x1 to b, all right. Now this is the first step for us. The next step, next step what we will do for the first case when the new the interval of our uncertainty is a to x1, again we will consider a to x1, we will again take the middle value and uh, again we will consider another two points x3 and x4, delta by 2 distance apart from the middle value. Again, we will find out the functional value at x3 and x4 and uh, according to this strategy, again we will just apply the same and accordingly by the uh, using the assumption of union modality, we will discard a portion of the interval and we will just consider the rest portion as the next level of interval of uncertainty in the next. And for the other case as well, when the in the after first step interval of uncertainty is from x1 to b, again we will take the middle point and we will consider two points x3 and x4 delta by 2 distance, distance apart from the middle value and we will find out the functional values at x3 and x4 accordingly by using the unimodality assumption we will just consider the part of the interval and we will just eliminate another part of the interval. Now, in this way we will proceed further and further and each step and each stage in the 
each uh, step of the iteration we will discard a portion of the interval and we will consider another portion of the interval as the new interval of uncertainty. In this way if I proceed farther and farther in the iteration and we will reach to a smaller, uh, smaller length, uh, smaller interval of uncertainty and after certain stage according to the number of according to the value of n or according to our desired accuracy we will stop our iteration. Now, if I, if I do number of experiments more then I will get better result. Whatever I have said there are a few things to be noted here that after the first stage what will be the length of interval of uncertainty? Initial length of interval of uncertainty is L0 is equal to B minus A. Yeah. Now, after the first step as I have explained to you after, after considerations of the two approximations of the optimal value as x1 and x2, we are eliminating a portion of the initial interval AB and we are accepting the other part and we are proceeding further and further with the same logic that is why this is the process of iteration. Now, if we consider that f x 1 is lesser than f x 2 then the interval of uncertainty is from a to x 2. That is why my next stage, next step we will consider the middle value of these two points and we will consider uh, another, another uh, two points x 3 and x 4. These are the new approximations for the optimal value. These are delta by 2, two distant apart from, apart from the middle value. Then we will say that x 3 and x 4 may be the possible approximations for the optimal value. But the main problem, main thing is that Again here we need to find out the functional values at x3 and x4 again. If we see that fx3 is lesser than fx4 then again the same thing we will discard the region x4 to x2 and we will consider a to x4. And if this is the other case then we will just proceed similarly. Now and similarly for the other case when we are eliminating the region a to x1 that is why my new interval of uncertainty is from x1 to b. Here also we will take the middle value and in the middle value we will take two points x3 and x4 delta by 2 distant ap distance apart from the middle value and this x3 and x4 could be the corresponding possible ap with the approximations for the optimal value and we will find out the value for function at x3 and x4 and we will see which one is greater and which one is lesser using the unimodality assumption and we will discard, we will eliminate a, a portion of the interval and we will consider another portion of the interval as the next level of interval of uncertainty for the next step. In this way we will proceed further and further and if I just, up, just reach up to n experiments we will see that we will have a smaller interval size and that interval, interval size will be declared as the inter final interval of uncertainty if the n is given to us how many number of experiments are, have to be performed is given to us or otherwise it is given that how much level of accuracy I want regarding the optimal value depending on that we will just uh, select the number of experiments. There are few things to be noted for this dichotomous searching technique is that at each stage we are evaluating two we are uh, generating two approximations and we are evaluating functional value at two approximations. That is why initial level of uncertainty was B minus A. After doing two experiments, if I consider another uh, column as number of experiments, after doing two experiments, my level of uncertainty will be L by 2 plus delta by 2. Why it is so? Because look at this figure, initially it was from A to B, either I am accepting A to from A to X2 or we are accepting from X1 to B. That means we are considering the half of the whole interval plus delta by 2 portion either this side or that side. That is why the whole interval of uncertainty will be L0 L by 2 plus delta by 2. In the next stage, 
when number of experiments are 4 that time x3 and x4 this is the size that is L0 by 2 plus delta by 2. Again we are considering the same and the whole part is L0 by L0 by 2 plus delta by 2 half of that plus delta by 2 all right. And after n experiments if I just proceed further and further after n experiments we will get if I just uh, modify this one then we are getting L0 by 2 square plus delta 1 by 2 square plus 1 by 2. This can be written as L0 by 2 plus delta 1 minus 1 by 2 to the power 2. Yeah, all right. That is why I will make, I will use this result here. And in general, we can declare that after n experiments, the length of the interval of uncertainty would be L2 by 2 to the power n by 2 plus this this was 2 square 2 to the power n by 2 plus delta into 1 minus 1 by 2 to the power n by 2. This figure is my ln that is the length of the final interval of uncertainty in the dichotomous search technique. All right, and here also we can just measure the efficiency of this searching technique as the reduction ratio ln by L0 that will be this value divided by L0 that will be the corresponding efficiency of the dichotomous search technique. The same technique let me just explain with the example in the next. Consider one minimization problem again here. Find the minimum value of value of fx, where fx is nonlinear function of single decision variable. 4x cube plus x square minus 7x plus 14 in the interval zero to one within ten percent of exact value. Now, if this is the case that uh, one thing is that uh, it has assumed the function is unimodal in the given range from 0 to 1 and if, if we are reaching to the final interval of uncertainty that value must be if this is the optimal value as x k then x k minus 1 and x k plus 1 then this ratio must be L0 by 10 because 10 percent of the exact value is allowed for us. That is why in general we can say if we consider the middle value as the middle value as the final of the final interval of uncertainty as the optimal value then we can say that uh, ln that is the nth length of the n length of the final interval of uncertainty divided by 2 because that is the middle value this must be lesser than equal to 10 percent of the original that is the initial interval of uncertainty all right let me repeat one second for you i wanted to say that if the final interval of uncertainty is having length ln then if we consider the middle value as the optimal value of the final interval of uncertainty then we can say that this ln by 2 that is the one side of that must be lesser than equal to ln by 10 because we are allowing the value of n such n in such a way that 
this side we are at, we can allow the 10 percent error and this side we can allow 10 percent deviation from the original value. That is why this is the case. Now, just now we have achieved that for dichotomous searching technique l n is equal to n naught by 2 to the power n by 2 plus delta 1 minus 2 to the power n by 2. If we just substitute this value here, then we can say and here L naught is equal to 1 because 0 to 1 is my interval. Then in this, in this case, we can say that 1 by 2 to the power n by 2 plus delta 1 minus 2 to the power n by 2 must be less than is equal to 1 by 5 by considering to this side alright. This is same as now we need to supply the value for delta here then only we can proceed further. Uh, let us consider delta is equal to 0 0.001 as I have said that as small as possible we will consider the value of delta and since we are doing it manually let me consider a reasonable minimum the smaller value that is delta is equal to 0 0.001. If we consider this value here, then we are getting the value of uh, n in this way. Just let me adjust it that is 1 minus delta that means 1 minus 0 0.001 and less than is equal to 1 by 5 and delta this side that would be 0 0.001 alright. That means we are getting here 0.999 by 2 to the power n by 2 lesser than is equal to 0 0.995 divided by 5 which implies 2 to the power n by 2 must be greater than is equal to 0 0.999 0 0.995 into 5 and this value is coming as 5.02. One thing is clear from the dichotomous technique is that n is always even because at each iteration we are considering two experiments at a time that is why n is even here and that is why if we consider n is equal to minimum value of n is equal to 6 that is sufficient for us approximately 6 that is sufficient for us and uh, this is the way we will proceed in the next. We will consider 6 experiments for solving this problem then we can, can, we can uh, conclude that we will get 10 percent accuracy of the exact value alright. That is why going to the next let us solve the problem. Now our first step would be step 1 there are 2 points 0 and 1 the middle value is 0 0.5 and we will consider x1 here and x2 here in such a way that this is delta by 2 that is 0 0.001 by 2 and this is delta by 2. That is why we are getting x1 is equal to 0 0.4995, x2 is equal to 0 0.5005. Let us see what is the corresponding functional value at these two points f x 1 will be is equal to 11.2515 and uh, x 2 will be is equal to 11.2485. If this is the case then let me draw the figure here. We are getting higher value for x 1 and we are getting lower value for x2 and uh, we are considering that function we need to find out the minimum value that is why if this is the case then certainly the minimum cannot occur in this region that is why we are discarding this region and the new interval of uncertainty we are considering in step 2 as from x1 to 1 what is my x1? That is 0 0.4995 to 1. Again the same process, we will take the interval 0 0.4995 to 1, 
we will take the middle value of this and uh, we will consider x3 and x4 in such a way this area this uh, distance is 0 0.0005 because delta value is given as 0 0.001 and this is delta by 2. That is why if this is so we are getting the x3 value as 0 0.74925 and x4 is equal to 0 0.75025. Let us see what is the corresponding functional value. We are getting the functional values f x 3 is equal to 10.999. If we just substitute the value in the given f x, our given f x is f x is equal to 4 x cube plus x square minus 7 x plus 14. Just substitute these values there, this value there and we will get corresponding functional value as this one and f x 4 is equal to 10 sorry 11.0003. What we see here again? We see that f x 3 is having lesser value and f x 4 is having higher value alright. That is why we are sure that minimum must, talk, must lie within this point to this point minimum cannot be this in this side. That is why we are eliminating this interval again. We are reducing the size of the interval of uncertainty. That is why in next step in step 3 our new interval of uncertainty will be point 0.4995 to x4 that is point 0.75025 alright. Again we will take the middle value of these two points let me consider the new interval of uncertainty 49952.75025 take the middle value again consider this side x5 this side x6 and this is again delta by 2 again delta by 2 in this way we are getting x5 is equal to 0.624375 x 6 is equal to 0 0.625 375 and corresponding x 5 at x 5 the functional value is 10.9928 and here just see the difference in functional values is now reducing these are much more closer now but still we are getting at x 6 the lower functional value that means the, the here the functional value is high here the functional value is low. But I do not have uh, I, I am not considering further because we have already decided that for getting 10 percent accuracy I can I have to do minimum 6 numbers of experiments that is why I can uh, stop here the iteration process and we will declare the new interval of uncertainty is from x 5 in the step 4 which part we are discarding here this is higher value this is lower value that is why I am discarding this region this interval alright. And we are declaring the, the last final interval of uncertainty is equal to from x5 that is that means from 624375 to 0 0.75025 and consider the middle value of these two. If I consider the midpoint of this interval midpoint will come as 0 0.6873 and we can declare this is my optimal value that is the minimum value. And if we consider this as a minimum value that is sure that we are uh, accepting the fact that this value is within 10 percent of exact value. And uh, one thing to be mentioned again okay the corresponding functional value let me write it down the corresponding functional value is 10.9599. Now if I do more number of experiments certainly we will get better result for this case alright. And, uh, let me go to the next 
that is the another very well known technique for solve for this is another searching technique for solving nonlinear problem optimization problem unconstant optimization problem that name of this technique is either interval halving technique or dichotomous technique you can I am sorry the bisection method also you can say interval halving method or bisection method. Bisection method is popular in numerical analysis the same method here also the here also the same method follows. Let me tell you the process for solving the inter for solving an uh, optimization problem unconstrained optimization problem using interval halving technique. Now, in the dichotomous technique we have considered again the same thing uh, we are considering the initial interval of uncertainty a to b all right. And in the interval halving technique what we do we will consider 3 points equally spaced 3 points rather 4 equally equal parts here and we will see how functional values are distributed within this. That is why we will consider x 1, x 0 is the middle value, x 2 is the right, side, right hand side value. So, we can say a is lesser than x 1, lesser than x naught, lesser than x 2, lesser than b all right. If this is the case in the interval halving technique in step 1 what we do let me write down the algorithm divide the interval of ini divide the initial interval of uncertainty a b into 4 equally into 4 equal parts and we will say that x 1, x naught and x 2 these are the possible approximations for the optimal value. Now, step 2 compute f x 1 let me consider f x 0 first we can say this as f 0 as well f x 1 we can consider shortly as f 1 and f x 2 f 2 and we are adopting some strategy here we are considering 3 cases just see if we are having f 2 greater than f naught greater than f 1 that means if we are having this is the case this is my a this is my b f naught I am sorry this is x naught this is uh, x 1 this is x 2 that means f 2 is having higher value f 2 is having higher value than f naught and f 1 is having lesser value. Then certainly the minimum cannot lie within this region that is why we will just discard this region in this case. And in the next level we will consider the, uh, the interval of uncertainty as from a to x 0 all right this is the first case go for the next case case 1 case 2 if this is the case f 2 is lesser than f naught lesser than f 1 see in the figure what is happening here sorry this is my a this is my b x naught x 1 x 2 that means we are having higher value in x 1 then the next value then this value then certainly we have to discard another portion which portion shall we discard for this that then we can say the minimum cannot lie in this interval we will discard this interval and we will consider in the next level as interval of uncertainty as from x 2 to b x naught to b all right. Now, let us consider the other case case 3 f naught f 1 is greater than f naught 
and f 2 is greater than f naught. That means, if we consider this thing again the same figure x naught middle x 1 x 2, we are considering f 1 is higher than x naught, not only that f 2 is again higher than x naught. Then certainly the figure tells us that minimum cannot lie either this region with the assumption of unimodality. Let me just point it out once again. We are considering all the functions are unimodal function within the given domain then only it is possible. Then the minimum cannot lie within this region. Now, what exactly we are getting that for each case we are discarding half of the interval that is the beauty of this interval halving technique. And each iteration we will discard half of this reach half of the interval and we will go to the next. Again we will repeat the same process. We will consider the portion in again we will take three points in between and uh, we will consider that is why let me write down the next step as repeat the process as long as the new interval of uncertainty is very small all right and one thing to be mentioned here in each time we are discarding half of the interval that is why after nth experiments n must be certainly one thing to be noted here and at each level we are considering 3 points in the first in the next level 1 point is given another 2 points we are considering that is why always n is greater than equal to 3 and it is odd numbered and ln will be is equal to 1 by 2 to the 2 to the power n minus 1 by 2 l naught this value we need it when we will just judge the efficiency means efficiency of the searching techniques and there we use this value and we will go further and this is the case this is the whole uh, algorithm for sol solving unconstrained optimization problem using interval halving technique. Let me give you one small example on this and let us see what is there in the next example. We have to minimize f x is equal to x into x minus 1.5 within the interval 0 to 1 all right and we have to consider we have to have 10 percent within exact value. Here also the same thing the same logic we will apply like, pre like previous one for solution that half of the interval of uncertainty length half of the length of the final interval of uncertainty must be lesser than is equal to L naught by 10. That means for this method ln by 2 is equal to if we consider that must be 2 to the power n minus 1 by 2 must be lesser than is equal to 1 by 5. From here we can conclude that n must be minimum value of n must be 7 because as I have said that n is greater than equal to 3 and n is odd. That is why we can calculate the value of n from here and we will see the value of n is greater than equal to 7. Now, let us start our process from here. Step 1, we are having 2 points 0 and 1, we are taking the middle value 0 0.5 this is as x 0. Let me consider x 1 and x 2 equally spaced that is why this is 0 0.25 and this is 0 0.75 all right. And let me consider the values functional values at each point x 1 0.25 x naught 0 0.5 x 2 0.75. Here we will get f x 1 is equal to minus 0 0.3125, f x naught is equal to minus 0 0.5 
and f x 2 is equal to minus 0.5625. If this is so, what we see here? We see here that f 1 is greater than f naught is and greater than f 2. In that is why we will discard the region a to x naught. This region we will discard because we are having higher value for this f 1 is the higher value than f, f naught than this. That is why minimum must occur within this region we will just discard this region. We will delete this interval and in the next level we will consider the interval of uncertainty from 0.5 to 1 again alright. Here also we will consider the same we will take the middle value as 0.75 and x1, x0, x2 and this value as 0 0.625, this value as 0 0.875, let me write it down 625, 0 0.75 and 0 0.875 and corresponding functional values f1 is equal to minus 0.5468, f2 is equal to minus 0.5625 and I am sorry this is f0 and f2 is equal to minus 0.5468. Here we will see that f1 is greater than f0 and f2 is greater than f0. That is why we will discard two portions from here this part as I explained before and this part. That is why my, my new level of uncertainty again will be from 6 to 5 to 875 all right and what is the middle value again my middle value is 0 0.75 and this value is 0 0.6875 and this value is 0 0.8125 again we will calculate the functional values. And we will see that the functional value f1 if I consider this is as x1, this is as x0 and this is as x2. We will see that f1 is greater than f0 just calculate the functional value we will see this we will get the same and f2 is again greater than f0. Again the same logic we will apply and we will discard this region alright and we will declare final interval of uncertainty as uncertainty is equal to up to this we have evaluated 7 functional values that is why we can conclude here for getting 10 percent accuracy we will declare this is the final interval of uncertainty 0.68752. 0.8125 and middle value of that that is that is the optimal value that is 0.75 for us. In this way with the interval halving technique we can solve the unconstrained optimization problem alright. Now for, for exercise let me give you few problem to be solved. whatever we have covered on that part some examples I am just writing for your practice find the minimum value of minimum of the following functions. One function is given as uh, f x is equal to x cube 6 x square for plus 4 x plus 12 x is within the interval from minus 2 to 6 that is the initial interval of uncertainty. Another function could be considered as f x is equal to 0.4 x cube minus 6 x sin x and consider x within the interval 
0 to 4. If this is the case, then using the following methods, solve the problem. One is that unrestricted search with fixed step size unrestricted search technique with fixed step size lambda is equal to 0 0.1 and with the initial lambda equal to 0 0.1 for uh, function 1 take the initial point as minus 2 and for function 2 take the initial point x 1 as 0 all right. We can you can extend this method for accelerated step size as well for getting better result in the sense that with less number of iteration you will get the same result. Exhaustive search use the exhaustive search technique to achieve minimum to achieve accuracy within 10 percent within 5 percent of exact value. All right. You can use the dichotoma search technique. Again get the 5 percent accuracy and do the same problem with the interval Havel techniques and have a feel which method is giving you better result rather which method is efficient. And in the next lecture I will discuss on the efficiency of the searching technique. Thank you for today.